black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah, fuck with me. <laughs> what? Yeah, what up? Yo, what is going on guys? Back with a mukbang today. And of course, we're going savage again. We're going back to the boneyard. This, however, is the pork rendition. So we have ribs today. I made them homemade. Also, non-traditional sauce because I am trying to get that summer bod back a little bit here. So I, you know, stored up for the winter. I did the squirrel bear type shit, hibernate, whatever, you know, stock up. And I want to try to get back to a little bit lean. So we're back on the keto, ketogenic diet. We're cutting out as many carbs as we can per day. Uh, barbecue sauce is traditionally filled with sugar. So I got this stuff from Cool Runnings. It's a Jamaican influence sauce, hot mango sauce. So this is gonna be spicy. And there's actually only three grams of carbs per two tablespoons. So on keto, you're trying to keep your carbs under 20 per day, ideally. I'm only gonna hit like maybe like nine-ish carbs for the day on this because every other meal I've had has been just like a completely carbless. I wanna go savage on some ribs and uh, I don't know, just shoot the shit. We got this Valentina on deck. I do love that. And this is a curveball. I don't know. I just, I'm just thinking if this is spicy and it's going to be kind of like almost like swings in a way, then maybe I can cut it with the ranch and just kind of like hang in there a little bit more. But I mean, we'll see what happens. I'm not really, really sure what's going to go down. Let's take this knife and get a little savagery going on here and see how tender these are. Let's do our best uh, surgical effort here and just chop these guys up. I'm pretty hyped for these. I'm hoping they're going to be dope. They're looking pretty great so far crispy tender good good the only thing is so hot nice okay come on ow, ow, ow. come on guys they're so hot i think i want some ranch could be a rib faux pas but whatever come at me haters go for a first bite go right up top here hmm so tender yeah, see, there's like segmented bones. So I don't know exactly what these are. To... Let's try it with ranch. Not bad. All right. Yeah, that's my favorite shit. When like a hater comes through on a video and tries to drop drop hate and it's like <laughs> most of the time they're just so unintelligent and like clearly just haven't learned or have no grasp on the english language or vo vocabulary or grammatical um you know efficiency accuracy and i'm just like so perplexed by how they think that it's going to like ruin my day or my life. Like nothing that you say to me has any bearing on my entire life. Like I'm living my life out here. Like, do you know what? Like I got shit going on. Like I do not give a fuck about what you're up to on your keyboard. So if there's anybody, I know there's a lot of people who are, hesitant to start a YouTube channel because they're too like sensitive or you know they don't they don't want to get hated on or whatever it's like the world's the world you're gonna get hated on no matter what so it doesn't really fucking matter and the only thing that you're allowing then if you're not even gonna start to try to do something that you want to do and succeed at it out of the fear of a hater like they're beating you so Beat the hater by just being you. Just fucking kill it. Just go do the fuck you want to do. The more you do what you want to do, and let go of exterior opinions about you, the more successful you're going to be, the more happy you're going to be, and the more a hater is defeated. Like, honestly. Like, when a hater leaves a comment, that they're like they're like frustrated at something that I do in the video, their day is actually more ruined by that frustration of them watching my video. Like they're sitting at home frustrated in, in, in their little fucking jerk off chair, like, uh, like I don't like the way you chew. It's like, 
you're mad. Like, look, you're you are mad. You're so mad that you left a comment. So, I'm chilling. Like, I'm eating good food. I'm collecting money from your uh, from your viewership. Like, thanks, bruh. Yeah, these are definitely like rib lit for sure. <laughs> rib lit. That's lit, bro. Those riblets are lit. So anyways, next topic. Moving on. How do I make these? Simple. All you do is you go buy the fresh rack at the store. And you boil a huge thing of water. Cut the rack in half, or th thirds. Tuck the rack in for, I did these for an hour 45, and they are super tender as you can tell, right? Boil them for an hour, hour 45, then put them on a baking sheet, turn on your broiler, basically as loud as it can go, or as high as it can go, I should say, and uh, and then put them in unsauced, let them kind of crisp up on the top because that's like you, how you achieve this bark. That's what that stuff's called, bark. So that more crispy-ish type piece, as you can see. So you'll achieve that. And then you're just going to sauce them a couple times. Sauce, put it back in, let it stick, pull it out, sauce, let it stick. And then for me, because the sauce kind of cooks, I don't want to say off, but it cooks into the meat, I guess, and kind of like creates a layer. At the very end, I just do, as you saw, like final dump or a final pour of the sauce, um, just so that it's like nice and saucy. When you're eating it, mmm, that piece is so good, it's just like no, no bone. Mmm. Back on that no bone. The ranch is actually pretty good. I cannot lie. I will say at this stage in the game, I am kind of missing the traditional barbecue sauce. I cannot lie. Because I love traditional barbecue sauce. So... All right, let's try this one next. Yeah, so again, it's... So these are definitely got to be riblets. Like, there's little pellets of bones everywhere. Mm. So some funny-ass shit happened to me recently. Um, I was at the movie theater. I didn't actually even go to see a movie. I just used it as a meeting point to meet uh, Miss Hoodie at because she was getting done at work or whatever, and I was kind of in the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to disappear out of the area. So, oddly enough, the movie theater has... A bar at it now, so uh, that's a thing in 2018. Is movie theaters have sell alcohol? So I went inside at the bar at the movie theater, and weirdly enough, to get a double, like a two shot drink, is like you would assume at the movies it would be crazy expensive, but it was actually like three dollars cheaper than any bar that I could go to. So the movie theater is now my certified pre drinking spot. So, shout out to Cineplex one time. Um, also, my movie theater has essentially, you have to ascend up a set of stairs or escalators, but the escalator was broken. A set of stairs that equates to either 
Kilimanjaro or Everest. I'm not sure which one. Could be K2. Anyways, you have to summit a mountain to get to uh, where the bar is and where the actual screens and whatever are, right? And um, I'm super, super, super late. And this crew of like five young, like 20-year-old kids come in. It's like basically all I was thinking was the whole time was I remember my, my first beer. And um, it's like three girls, two, two guys. And the two girls had to pee really bad, Bob. So, But the escalator was out, so there's like a set of stairs that you have to walk up. And the one girl was so drunk, and she had, like, a mini skirt on, and it was already, like, basically showing, like, booty cheek. So, me and my girlfriend are standing there, because we're just talking, figuring out what we're going to go do. And um, three, the three kids, two guys and one girl start passing out. They, like, sit down on this wall, and they're just, like, all leaned on each other passing out and I was just like rookie and then as one girl's going upstairs after she takes like her first steps and her little like stilettos or whatever her skirt completely just went up to her waist so she just bare assed bare everything going up these stairs and the higher she gets like the more you can kind of start seeing everything and like the one kid he uh he noticed it and he's like yelling up the stairs. He's like, like Cindy, pull down your skirt. <laughs> Everything is showing, like your eyes are showing. Me and my girlfriend are just laughing. And then the kid, like yelling, was like, there's all these passerbyers just being like, the fuck? Like, that's weird. And he's all drunk. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody have a look. Have a free show. And I'm just like, oh, my God, dude, relax. Like, it's just a butt. It's nothing that we haven't seen before. Also, no one's perving out. The fact that there's a girl passing you by who essentially has no pants on. Like, of course, you're going to be like, you're going to have a, a look. You're going to be like, what's going on here? But he seemed to me to me to be more butthurt by the fact that I feel like he was like into this girl, but she would never actually let him see her ass in any other situation other than that because he's like he seemed so like beta male like just couldn't get with her and shit so. He's all offended that, like, other people get a peek at his little prized possession. Just my, uh, my synopsis of the situation, I guess we'll call it. fat chunk or cartilage I guess yeah cartilage all right I'm gonna wipe up for a second here before we get into this next half rack get hydrated a bit and uh, let's get to it another quite actually way funnier the most hilarious this is so weird all right well I guess we'll just rip little riblets off a funny ass thing to happen. One of my friends DJing event, and uh, there's this girl, and there's this girl jamming out on the dance floor, and then she goes over to my buddy who's DJing. And makes a song request. He 
he gives her like a song request or whatever. She's jamming out, she's vibing out again. And I think it gets in her head that she wants to make another request. So on this dance floor, dance floor is quite big. And there's like a stage and the stage is elevated. There's a little set of stairs and there's the, the DJ booth. And my buddy's there. So she had already once previously like walked up, walked up the set of stairs and gone to talk to him to request a song the first time. Second time, I don't know if the devil took over her body for like 30 seconds. She straight up gets on her mark, get ready, set, go. Gun goes off. She fucking Hussein bolts it over to the stage, across the dance floor. I'm talking, she's at a clip, like 90 an hour, four foot elevation to the stage. She doesn't like even attempt to like make a gazelle hop to get up there. She just straight up shinners into the edge of the stage, smacks down, her head hits the stage, and then she goes into like this side roll down this little wood set of stairs. And then when she gets to the bottom, she knocks the table and a drink falls like onto her head. And just like, <laughs> I just, I exploded. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? So it was intense. She was fine. It just, like, it's not funny to, like, she wasn't hurt or anything. So that's all good. But like in the moment, like, especially having been drinking and stuff and just, I don't know. I just exploded with laughter. Like I was just dying because it just, I couldn't help it. But, uh, everybody rushed over and like made sure she was fine and that. And she was fine. Like she, however, did return. Like she like tucked her tail between her legs and just like walked back to a table and just like sit down and just stopped dancing. Period. Cause she had probably like a fractured shin bone but we've all been there i've fallen off stages for sure 100 percent. i used to like be one of those dudes who in the club would like go up on the stage and like tr like grind with girls and like sometimes you just get too close to your edge and you just bail or like you speaker dance that's when there's like those speakers like on the stage and you get on the speaker some with a girl and you're like grinding but then you like slip dangerous club activities Be careful out there, guys. Be careful. I'm telling you. Drinking is dangerous. The worst part is you wake up in the morning and you're like, the fuck? Like, you look down, your ankle looks like a uh, cabbage patch doll. And you're like, how'd that happen? Like, where did that come from? And then you have to go first 48 the shit. You got to unsolve the mystery. Or unravel the mystery. Solve the mystery. A lot of times you won't recollect it and you'll just, you'll just never know. You just live with a party scar. And you'll just never know. What was one that happened to me recently? Oh, no. The worst one that ever happened to me was actually. I essentially, I think I broke my ankle. I never got anything done about it. didn't fix it. But I was leaving this one bar in the wintertime. And the roads were like fresh snow, but also slushy. So really slippery. And uh, I needed a cab. And I was kind of like, it was kind of like it drove past and was kind of kept driving. So I like gave chase at the cab. And in like the drunken, snowy, slushy conditions, I like, like snapped, like I rolled my ankle and like bailed the ground. But when it, 
went, I heard it go like, like I heard a snap. And, uh, I limped my way to the corner store because it was like, I'm freezing slash like I could barely walk on it. <clears throat> Chilled in the corner store for warmth and then also called the cab from there. Went home, passed out. Next day, looked down, cabbage patch, doll ankle. I'm like, well, this doesn't seem great. Probably just a sprain. So, in my hard headedness, I didn't do anything about it. And, um, I mean, it was bad for a while. It healed up eventually. But, it's never been the same since. Still to this day, when I, like, even right now, if I, like, put it, like, roll it to the side and put pressure on it, I can feel exactly where. It, it got hurt. It feels like it's just weak, you know? Like, it could snap again, you know? So, moral of the story is don't run drunk in the winter. If there's anything you can take from this, that's what you should take. I'm just going to call it here. I'm pretty uh, satiated. And uh, I didn't expect these to be riblets. That really kind of is bumming me out just a little bit. It just wasn't... I was hoping to have, like, you know, those clean, long, perfect bones. But instead, I ended up with this junkyard here. So whatever it is, what it is. That's what you get in life sometimes, surprises. Just gotta move on. Stay positive. The next ribs will be real, the real ones. They'll be better. I'll figure it out. I'll pay more attention. Okay? All right. Until the next one, you guys know what to do. You gotta eat good. You gotta live well. And you gotta stay true.